Welcome to the Leading Hope Podcast with Kevin Jack. Your influence will lead people somewhere, lead them towards hope. Everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Welcome to Leading Hope with Kevin Jack. I'm your host, VJ Williams, here with my friend and pastor, Kevin Jack. Thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day to become a better leader. We'll release a new episode every Wednesday, so we'd love for you to subscribe, share on social media, and bring others along with us on this journey of becoming a better leader. Visit leadinghope.online to get updates and find out more about the Leading Hope community. We are in episode 19, Kevin. Today That was a better is, intro. That thank was you, a better intro thank than you. last time. We are. We are. Last one, episode 18. Yeah. Which is marshmallows. Yeah. Um, we are pumped up to be here. Episode 19 is Criticism Game. Criticism Game. So, Kevin, what do you have about the Criticism Game? So, this month, our whole focus is on criticism, how we handle criticism. And uh, this is what I want to really do within this, is I want to reframe how we think about criticism, and I want to give you some practical tools. So, the first work in these first two episodes last week, and now including today, is largely about how we think. And then the next two is going to largely be about what we do. So, this is what I want you to do is I want you to imagine, maybe you have to take a second right now and imagine the last time you received criticism to put you in that frame of mind, whether it was at your office from your boss when you left or going into work, maybe you're driving in on your commute today and you just had a fight with your spouse or one of your kids or something like that and they gave criticism, they put feedback at you. I want you to do this for a second. I want you to imagine that criticism is a game. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a very fun game. <laughs> Here you go. Hey, I'd like to see that board game released. Who <laughs> wants to play Criticism? <laughs> Two to seven players. <laughs> Last way longer than you want it to. Hey, that actually would be a fun game. <laughs> I started saying you might like that. <laughs> so I know it doesn't sound like a fun game, but I think this is helpful for shaping how we think about what we're doing. For most of us, this is what I believe. I believe that the game we think that we're playing when it comes to criticism is dodgeball. And don't get me wrong, I love dodgeball, but no one really wants to play criticism dodgeball. And how criticism dodgeball works is people are throwing stuff at you and you're trying to avoid it at all costs. And if they hit you, you might get mad and pick up a ball and throw it back at them. And that's that's kind of how most of us operate our lives when it comes to criticism. We're playing dodgeball, We're just firing shots back and forth at each other, avoiding it, hoping that we miss it. But as we talked about last week, we said the goal of criticism is not to avoid criticism. The goal of criticism is to get better. That's what we're seeking to do. So we need to reframe our game. We need to reframe how we think. So hang with me for a little bit on this metaphor, because I think it works really well, although it may sound like I'm taking it too far. Imagine... When you are being criticized, when criticism is coming your way, that you're not playing dodgeball, but that you're playing baseball instead. Instead of playing dodgeball, you're playing baseball. And here's here's two really simple practical things. Instead of someone throwing something at you, they were throwing it to you. Instead of someone pelting a, a, a critique at you to hurt you, they were throwing it to you. And when they threw it to you, you had a choice on what to do with it. You get to decide how you respond. So here's your choice, okay? Criticism gets lobbed your way. You just finished a report. You just finished a project. You just finished a presentation. You made a decision. The aftermath is coming in. You cleaned up the dishes. You cleaned the bathroom. You had a conversation with one of your kids or spouse. Like all those things that have taken place. And you're receiving the criticism afterwards. It's not thrown at you. They're not trying to hurt you. They're throwing it to you. And here's the decision you get to make. Do you swing or not? Is it a pitch that you should swing at? Or is it a pitch that you should let go by? So let me explain that. If it's not worthwhile, if it's not helpful, if it's not from a healthy source, don't swing. Mm. (laughs) Not every pitch thrown to you do you have to swing at. Just because someone threw a pitch at you doesn't mean you have to swing. If it's not worth it, don't swing at it. Don't respond. Don't get agitated. 
Don't swing at every pitch that comes your way. If you swing at pitches in the dirt, you will strike out. If you if you respond to things that you have no business responding to, you will get worse and you will hurt your impact and influence along the way. And it's almost like we've got this such a high justice meter that all of a sudden everyone has that we can't ever let things go past and understand it's not worth our response. It's not worth our time. So here's here's a couple ways to look at this. Uh, whether it's email, whether it's uh, verbal, whether it's someone said something to you, left a voicemail, sent you a text, sent you an anonymous letter. If it's not worthwhile, don't respond. You don't have to say something back all the time. You don't have to type that email. In fact, I would venture to say, if you want to type the email, you should not type the email mm. more than anything else. And uh, one of my favorite statements is, uh, don't wrestle with pigs. You both get muddy and the pig likes it, okay? If it's not worthwhile, don't respond. In another way, don't give it time. Like, don't give it for one mental headspace, but another piece on it, if someone isn't on your same agenda, don't put them on your calendar. If someone isn't moving towards the same purpose that you are, don't give them time. Like, you don't have to take every meeting that someone wants to schedule with you. And say like this, this is what I've learned through years of being a pastor is um, uh, people within the church, uh, I'm, I'll have conversations, I'll do all these other things. But I found this weird thing that happens is that for people who leave their church to come to your church, they then try to turn your church into the one that they just left. Mm. It's like, I don't understand this at all. and so. Sometimes, if it's not from a healthy source, it's not with healthy intentions, I don't have to take that meeting. Mm. Just because someone requests a meeting doesn't mean I have to take the meeting within there. And, and sometimes, there's just pitches in the dirt. I'm not going to swing. I don't have to respond. Like, it's a dumb decision for me to go after it. But on the other hand, if it is worthwhile, if it is helpful, if there is something to be learned, swing. I engage with the criticism. Learn something and acknowledge that you're engaging the criticism, not necessarily the person within there. And, and what we have to understand is, is the simple things within this metaphor. They're not throwing it at you. They're throwing it to you. And you get to decide how you respond. Not every criticism thrown your way should you dignify with a response. And sometimes, if you don't learn this lesson, you're going to swing at things that will cause you to strike out in the long run. You will engage with criticism that should never get the time of day in your life, that should never occupy your mental headspace, and you will be worse for it, and you will be distracted from the purpose with which you were created. But if it is worthwhile, if it is from a healthy source, and if you do have an inclination that you have something to learn, engage with it. You have a choice in how you respond to criticism. Not all criticism is equal, so don't treat it as such. Play baseball, not dodgeball. That is uh, so interesting. You left it right there for me. So uh, <laughs> what's exciting about this, and I got to hurry up because I don't want to stick on the sports analogies here, but it's so fun. <laughs> And sports. So here's the thing about sports. Uh, this this thing, this baseball versus dodgeball, I think that's a fantastic analogy because that sums it all up. The only person in the world that doesn't work for is Barry Bonds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> like that guy would only hit the perfect pitch, and he was absolutely great. Fair. Taking this... criticism? <laughs> this was too much. Anyway, <laughs> that's funny. If we if we lost you there, just completely ignore those last 30. Don't swing at that last 30 <laughs> seconds. There you go. That's awesome. Uh, but here we go. Uh, if you really want to write the email, don't write the email. Yeah. That is fan. If you don't, if you really want to send that text or if you don't really want to say that to that person, yeah. don't do it. I, I mean, if this whole episode is wrapped up, man, that is that is fantastic advice. Uh, it happens all the time. Yeah, there it, are many times throughout the day where you decide, "Am I actually going to do this? Mm -hmm. Should I?" I just go at the end of the day. I go, "Man, 
if I want to say something, it's probably to build up my own ego. If I need to say something but don't want to say it, it's probably what's best for the other person. And so, man, the whole litmus test of your life and what you say is, do I want to say it? Don't say it. Do I not want to say it? Then say it. <laughs> That's, I mean, seriously, I, I know we joke about it, but the, that baseball analogy is such a great, I mean, you know, someone is, uh, well, well, you said it. Most of us uh, think it's being thrown at us mm-hmm. uh, right in the mouth. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what we think. And um, you're you're saying it's to us. It's to us. It's, uh, it's the baseball analogy. And, and I, I think within that, I think within this perspective, I go, how often have we seen people derailed by comments from critics that they should have never been derailed from? And they didn't have to be. But like this sense of like, oh, just because it's said to me or said at me, I've got to respond. It's like, no, you don't. Where did you get that idea? Right. You swing into the pitch in the dirt and you're going to strike out. Quit striking out. Yeah, that's good. And I love that you you also said uh, in in the cases of the healthy criticism, you say they're not trying to hurt me. I mm-hmm. wrote it down three times. Not trying to hurt me. They're not trying to hurt me. They're not trying to hurt me. Yeah. If I believe that, then I can obviously know what to swing at and whatnot, mm-hmm. um, which is fantastic. I'm going uh, to keep that one with me. Um, and then one of the things you also said is not all criticism is equal. Yep. I mean, that is so true. So I want you to talk, and I want you to spend a little time on this too, uh, talk more about who and why we should only give certain people the authority to <laughs> criticize. So uh, let me, I wasn't planning on doing this, but just from our conversation, let me take the metaphor Way too far. Go ahead. Uh, I played, I didn't play a lot of baseball. Uh, I actually quit playing baseball. This is the sad sob story to the end of my baseball career is in the league I played in, you were only allowed to hit three batters in one inning before they pulled you and wouldn't let you pitch the rest of the year. You were a pitcher? Yeah. And then I hit three batters in a row. And <laughs> so I couldn't pitch anymore and I didn't want to play anymore after that season. On but purpose? I- no, not <laughs> just asking. I'm not a monster. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was like, yeah, I was, I was six, and I just wanted to hit the other team, and I've been seeing a therapist ever since then because <laughs> that's what I needed. All right, so let me take a uh, year before kids pitch yep. in baseball. Uh, you have coaches pitch. It's your coach looking across from you, throwing you the ball. Yep. Now there's a there's a big difference when you're playing a pitcher on the other team. He wants to strike you out. Yep. Your coach. Wants you to hit the ball. Yeah. And so he's throwing it as much as he can right in there in that sweet spot. And I, I think it's a hard piece of going, I'm not just saying, like, y- you have to evaluate that source. And, and the hardest thing within there is to understand, it can be an unhealthy source and still be valid criticism. And I don't want to miss that. Mm-hmm. But the first thing I'm looking at is I'm looking at who's pitching me the ball. Yeah. Who, who's throwing it to me. Yeah. Because the enemy... Wants me to strike out. Yeah. My coach wants me to hit the ball more than anything else. Is it someone who's on your team or not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think that's a valid point, too, is that, you know, we always say keep your uh, friends close, keep your enemies closer <laughs> so that you can identify who they are. Yeah. I think that's an important thing. Um, man, there are— and Let me say this, yeah. Obama, is to go, if everyone's an enemy, you're looking at the world wrong. Yeah. If every criticism that comes your way is someone who's trying to hurt you, you go, that's you. Yeah. That's not the world. That's you. Yeah. And you need to reframe how you look at the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are there are uh, quite a few things that you, you walked around uh, in this that are important. One of them being the fact that uh, to decide when to wrestle with pigs. Is there ever a good time to <laughs> wrestle with pigs? I mean – so here's the here's, not literally. <laughs> here's the problem is just just like me, like I love conflict. Yeah, and I know some people think I'm like a I'm a masochist or something like that <laughs> within there, like the like that's problems. But to go like if there's controversy, I want to know what's up. Yeah. Like uh, right now as we're recording these, uh, there's all the uh, presidential debates going on for the primaries. Oh yeah. Like, I love it. Like, I love it. And my wife is like, turn it off. I'm tired of hearing them argue. And I'm like, I think it's fascinating within there. Yeah. And so the hard thing is I just have to acknowledge that that that's within my personality to get sidetracked by stuff that shouldn't matter just because I think the conflict itself is interesting in what I can learn. 
And so a lot of that is by person nature to go, man, are you someone who's going to avoid that at all costs? You probably need to engage more. Are you someone who's going to engage at every possible moment? You probably need to avoid that a little more. Yeah, I'm probably on that side of uh, I, I probably uh, like the conflict a little bit too much. You know, I would agree, VJ. Yeah, I would say uh, <laughs> I would live in that tension a little longer than I probably <laughs> need to. Um, but, you know, I, at the end of the day, I would rather for me, I think it's more healthy to be in that than to avoid. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, avoid becomes complacency. And complacency becomes ungrowth. That's not a word. I don't know what the opposite of growth is. Uh, lack, not, not growing. Not growing. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there we go. Ungrowth. You guys can write that down. Welcome to um, Leading Hope, where we <laughs> help you in your leadership yeah, and make up the words. <laughs> we make up words. But <laughs> that is that is what it is at the core. I would rather have that. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the whole metaphor of baseball is such a – I think that's what we're going to take away from this is the fact that – the pitches are coming whether we like it or not. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. They're, they're, we can't. We're not going to get out. It doesn't matter if you work in a church. doesn't matter if you work in corporate America. doesn't matter if you work at a grocery chain. It doesn't matter. Like the, the ball is coming. Yep. Um, and we talk always. about. Yeah, it always coming. And most of the time, you, you know, I've got my fingers up, criticism, feedback, whatever you want. You get to choose what you do with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, you get to choose whether to swing or take the pitch. And uh, I mean, is there anything that you can help somebody with today on on deciding how they change their mindset and perceive it as feedback every time, even when it comes from an unlikely not expert source? I think the – so like you say, I think over time, it's a skill. That's a, that's a competency that gets developed over time. Everyone, when they first receive criticism, my goodness, my kids – Anytime I correct them early on in their life, like, it's hard. Mm. Like, it's hard to get that. And so you go, that's a skill that gets developed. That's a skill. That's why we talk about this because you can grow in that. But, but behind that skill that gets developed is a value to get better, which is ultimately a value to not fall short of your potential. And if that value is there, the skill will naturally grow from that. The value is almost like a seed where the skill is the tree that comes out of it. And if your value is to avoid all conflict, you're going to miss out on your potential. If your value is just to feel good about yourself at every moment of the day, then you're going to miss out. Uh, one of the great statements I heard the other day <laughs> was that uh, the opposite of depression is not happiness. The opposite of depression is purpose. Oh. Out driving along, I was like pulled off on the side of the road, made sure I typed that into my phone. I was like, yeah. that, that's amazing. Yeah. But to go within there, as we look at this in the context of criticism, is to go, don't make your goal to be happy. Make your goal to live a life that's meaningful. Yeah. And if you do that, if that is your highest value, then the feedback and criticism that you receive will only be seen as just stops on that path that keep you pointed in the right direction rather than things that derail you. They're pitches that you get to hit the knock out of the park, not things that are thrown at you. Yeah, uh, you know we have a couple minutes left here, and I didn't have I didn't have any other questions that I really wanted to ask until you, you just talked about kids. And I, we talked about all these different situations, uh, you know, leaders in churches, uh, corporate America, all those things. But kids, man, kids, and and I'm I was a kid. I understand that I didn't take criticism well, and I think that's a natural position for kids. Not all kids, but most kids, I would say, don't handle it well. Yeah. Is there something I know that you said teach them value, teach them the uh, you know the thing? Is there something that you could you could give someone who's a parent today that would help their kids receive criticism in a in a uh, positive manner? Oh, this is gonna be fun. You yeah. ready? Yep. Receive criticism from your kids. Oh, that's great. And uh, so let me give you an example. The other day, I'm walking into my daughter's room uh, to kiss her goodnight. And uh, and she made a mean comment to me, meaning to be joking, but made a mean comment to me. And I just told her, I said, that's mean. She broke down crying. She said, you said there aren't mean people. There's just people who do mean things. And this is part of a longer conversation. Yeah. But I knelt down beside her bed and I said, I am so sorry. I was completely wrong in how I said that. Thanks for pointing that out to me. And I know that sounds like the end of like a of like a full house episode, the way I said that. Yeah, we yeah, need yeah, like the soft music behind there. Nah. But those are the words that I needed to say, my daughter. I was wrong. Thank you for pointing that out to me. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. And it's amazing when my kids know that they can give me criticism. That's not what they're thinking. Sure. But they know dad knows he's not perfect and he's willing to get better. That enables them and opens them up to receive that same criticism. Your kids are never going to know what you tell them, but they are going to follow what you model for them. That's awesome. 20 minutes and we got to that. Look at, at us, end. man. That's, uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> we should have started with that. Oh, man. It, that's why we have this dialogue. That's why we have this format. We really enjoy it. Man, thanks for listening today. Is there anything else you want to say? I mean, that hit it. I mean, that hit it. Yeah, I mean, more than anything else, I want people to handle criticism in a healthy way that helps them get better. Switch your framework. You're not playing dodgeball. You're playing baseball. Don't swing at pitches in the dirt. You'll strike out. Go for the things that matter. I love it. Go for the things that matter. Hey, don't forget to rate and review and subscribe. And we love hearing all your stories of how the podcast is working in your life and business. And if you have a story, visit leadinghope.online and, and send it to us. We'd love to hear your story. Don't, don't we love hearing these stories? We love it. I mean, it's incredible to hear the stories of how things are working for you guys. So make sure you send us your stories. We love, love, love hearing from you guys. Uh, thank you for so much joining us on today's episode 19, Criticism Game. Join us back for episode 20 next week, Preventing criticism. And remember, everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Have a good day.